Usman and Ali, it, it was an interview where you're getting a little bit quotes from both of them. But Usman has told Ali, and Ali came out and told us that Usman wants a quick turnaround. Now, I have to start with that. Because if you guys didn't read this and where you left off with Usman was in the cage on the pay-per-view as they faded to black and rolled the credits, last thing Usman said is, want some time off. He has now changed that. Very common. Very, very common for a guy in that moment to run it back and correct it a couple of days later, whatever it could be. A call out in the wrong direction or calling for time off in the wrong direction and realizing, man, I feel great. Next morning, you get up, I feel great. By the way, I'm close to weight and I'm in shape. Let's get back in there. So Usman started over. He wants back in there. How quick can you get Usman and Colby together? Well, Ali told Usman, look, you've already defended twice this year. It's going to be a hard fight either way. But instead of Colby, why don't we take a look at Kiesa? Kies is ranked number seven. He's coming off of two wins, both main event fights, which shows you he's a main event fighter, not to mention championship round guy. Okay, Kiesa, look, Kies is not a bad pick at all. It would surprise me if Kiesa went in for a world title right now as the number seven guy. I would be surprised. That doesn't mean that's not a bad pick. And the thing that I liked about this, and I'll be devastated if it's not Colby, by the way, but the thing that I liked about this is when Ali offered interference into the plan of Colby and Kamara, he offered another suggestion. So he comes out, says, we want to do it. We want to turn this around quickly. We want to correct that statement. And we want to do it with this guy. Now, I only bring that to you because how many times have we seen him? Mean, we saw Masvidal's manager days ago come out and say, Masvidal will do something if it makes sense. Hard stop and didn't tell us what that was. Right, so now you're playing a game of cat and mouse. And you're playing with a guy whose position in the industry really, it doesn't matter if he's in it or he's not. It's one of those things. But now we have to wonder what sense means. Ali did the exact same thing, except he made an offering. He offered his suggestion. It was a very good move. As a manager, that was a very good and wise, and not to mention helpful move. Just to hear what you don't want to do, you must offer what you do want to do. So that's what this was. Now I got to tell you, as I, if I look at 2021, I believe for you full heartedly, regardless of all the changes, all the nuances, all the things that we're going to see and learn that haven't even been re revealed to us yet. Even in face of mystery, I still believe Usman versus Covington is the biggest fight of 2021. I believe when that fight comes, and I'm not trying to argue for you guys that right now of any fight you can see that that's the one. I'm telling you, it's a big one right now. But by the time that fight, by the time the music hits those speakers, that will go down. And I don't think anybody will touch its numbers. Usman versus Covington is the hardest fight. It was the dirtiest fight. And it was the closest fight I had ever seen. Particularly amongst two guys who both were positive they could beat the other one. And the best fights are where there's no doubt, where both guys are sure. They're sure of it. I'm, be, I'm getting victory tonight. They trust in themselves, whatever I have to walk through. However sharp that glass or hot those flames, I'm going through it. And that's what you have in these guys, and they haven't changed. They also have a, a very interesting part of the story, which is they both are at new camps now. What do we make of that? And how do they look at these new camps? So we go back and look at Usman versus Masvidal for his most recent work or Covington versus T. Wood for his most recent piece of work. They look damn good is what they look. They look like different fighters. So now you're telling me the closest, hardest, dirtiest fight that I've ever seen is going to happen again, except both guys are now better. So it's going to be dirt, dirtier, closer. It's, it's one of these things that's just very hard for me to turn away from as a viewer and knowing that these stories haven't been told yet, but once the fight is signed and those stories start to come out, I think it's the biggest fight of 2021. I'd hedge my bet right there. I can't see anything coming in. Two guys that understand promotion that genuinely do not like each other. Huge fights based around grudge. Grudge is very hard. Most guys don't have them. Why would you want to have a grudge? How would you like to 
go to work and one of your coworkers is, is, is your nemesis. How fun would that be? I mean, grudges don't really exist. And if they do, most people are civil and they hide it. Talk about the guy behind his back like a gentleman. No, these two? Uh-uh. Big problem. It's a big problem. And I think if, if we do get to see that fight, and I don't know how much Ali believes that Kiesa can replace Covington. I think that Ali, who also has a grudge, is having a little fun. I think he's making him sweat a little bit. You guys will remember when Stipe did this to Daniel? I loved it when Stipe did it to Daniel. But the reason I loved it is I had to remind Daniel, hey, before you get too worked up here, you did it to him. He's remembering and paying you back. He's going to do the fight. I assure Daniel, he's going to do the fight. But he's paying you back from when you strung him along, when you made him think you wanted to go in another direction, when he believed he was the rightful one to get that opportunity, but you were trying to bring in Brock Lesnar. He's paying you back. You're getting a receipt. I think in many ways, Ali is giving a receipt. And I don't believe that Usman is going to back down from anybody, not to mention he did put some kind of a time frame in this, which is very relevant. Usman put some kind of, I would like to fight Michael Chiesa at UFC 264. Something like this. I don't know the number, but the point is he did include a date. So now we know, now it's not a matter of calling Usman and say, hey, can you be ready for Covington? He's already said when he can be ready. Got to figure out who that opponent is. I'm not losing sight of this in the least. I'm quite sure I know who that opponent is going to be. I, I for damn sure know who that opponent should be. But I also got to give credit to the way Usman played this. Here we are, building hype, talking narrative, getting headlines, because his manager was smart enough to not just say no and lay out. It was no comma and made an offering of Kiesa.